all stand one more time if you're able. <clears throat> 105, Rescue the Perishing. <clears throat> Sing the first, second, and the last. <clears throat> Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. We for the erring ones, lift up the fallen, tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Though they are sliding him, still he is waiting, waiting the penitent child to receive. Plead with him earnestly, plead with him gently. He will forgive if they only believe. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Let's take his time to shake hands. <clears throat> Make your way back to your seats. Let's sing the last verse of 105. Rescue the perishing, duty demands its strength. For thy labor the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way, patiently win them. Tell the poor wanderer a Savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. 451, <clears throat> remain standing, turn to 451. <clears throat> Sing the first, the second, and the last on this one. <clears throat> was a time on earth when in the book of heaven old account was standing for sins yet unforgiven my name was at the top and many things below i went unto the keeper and settled long ago long ago long ago yes the old account was settled long ago and the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away when the old account was settled long ago. The old account was large and growing every day, for I was always sinning and never tried to pay. But when I looked ahead and saw such pain and woe, I said that I would settle. I settled long ago, long ago. Long ago, yes, the 
Yes, the old account was settled long ago, and the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away when the old account was settled long ago. O sinner, seek the Lord, repent of all your sin, for thus he has commanded, if you would enter in, and then if you should live a hundred years below, up there you'll not regret it, you settled long ago, long ago, long ago, yes, the old account was settled long ago. And the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away when the old account was settled long ago. <clears throat> All right, good singing. Thank you. you. May be seated. We'll have the ushers come forward at this time, and that'll be a blessing as they're coming. I'll read to you a missionary prayer letter. And if you need an offering, you'll slip your hand up. These fellows will get one to you. This is from the Joel Haynes family to the Navajo Nation, okay? And we've supported the Haynes family for many, many years now. His brother Mark Haynes is brother Joel's dad. They both have uh, churches out there on the reservation. And we took our youth choir out there to sing a few years ago and, and had a great time. It says, looking back, the end of year report, the final prayer letter to close out the year, is one I enjoy writing as it gives me opportunity to reflect upon the grace of God over this, uh, the past year. For 2021, the harvest in Pinyon, that's where one of the churches is, uh, yielded 22 saved and 13 baptized. Hallelujah. An additional 21 souls profess Christ as their Savior through our VBS outreach and over the summer bringing the grand total to 43 saved and 13 baptized for 2021. God is worthy of glory and honor. This is just a snapshot of the impact your giving has made among the Navajo as many of the other church plants are rejoicing over similar if not larger measures of fruit in their ministries. The Lord's work among the Navajo is alive and well. Looking around the fourth quarter, as strange as it may sound, the final quarter of the year is typically the most fruitful for church growth on the reservation. Stronghold Baptist Church averaged 80 in attendance over the last two months with 88 in attendance for Thanksgiving service and additional, an astounding 173 in attendance for the Christmas outreach Sunday morning service. We also produced a Christmas skip that saw the building bursting beyond capacity with attendees who stood in line for over a half an hour in the cold to get a good seat. Once the church doors opened for the event, it was quite a spectacle. The Lord opened the door for me to officiate over two dozen funerals this year, six of which were in the last quarter. The majority of these funerals were for young people from ages 14 to 25 years old who committed suicide. Our people are dying in sin and hopelessness. I do not know the impact of my preaching at these services, but in every case, sinners responded to the invitation. By God's grace, I pray uh, the work will be greatly increased by our ministering to the hopeless and hurting. A life in Christ is the only kind, of, uh, the only kind worth living. On a joyful note, after much counseling and discipleship, I officiated a wedding for one uh, dear couple to make their relationship right before the Lord. It was a grand time of fellowship and reflection on Christ's return for His bride. Looking forward to the coming year, I'm not sure what 2022 holds, but I know the one who holds 2022. This gives me great anticipation for the, uh, what lies ahead. We have seen three couples saved and baptized recently, all of whom have multiple children. There are five new families attending regularly and going through discipleship lessons. I am personally overseeing the discipleship of eight individuals. What potential for the new year. With this sudden growth, the Lord has led us to uh, pursue an expansion of our facilities in Pinyon. Uh, would you pray with us about uh, doubling the size of our 32 by 72 foot building to accommodate the growth? Specifically, it would be a blessing to get help with a professional blueprint as a guide uh, for the various volunteer labor forces that will participate in this project. Thank you for your prayers in, on this matter. Several other matters for uh, prayer for 2022 would be the college students, our first B VBS outreach in Chin Lee. Arizona, where the Hobbs will be establishing a church plant in the coming years. Provision for the youth camp buildings in Nazalini that are necessary to host more reservation churches who would like to bring their young people for camp and the establishment of a radio station ministry to reach the entire reservation. Might the Lord be uh, calling you to help us. And then family updates, the, tri uh, the Haines tribe. Our little tribe is well. We have battled physical sickness recently. Uh, but our spirits are high on the health of the ministry. Fabiola and Joel Jr. are filling their bus routes weekly. Judah and Titus are passing, are track passing out, uh, 
track passing machines while Justice and Jonas just go with the flow in their own little worlds. Uh, I covet your prayers personally. I will preach out. Uh, I will preach 30 out-of-state meetings this year. We are grateful and humble as a family that God would use us in any fashion. We love our Lord, spreading the light in Navajo land. And when we went to the church in Pinyon, they did not have indoor facilities. So what does that mean? That means they had porta potties outside the church. Amen. But I love the Navajos. I love Navajo tacos. And, uh, man, the Navajos have their own rendition of a taco, and it's good. Amen. It's on flatbread and, and all of that. And they have a lot of Indian traditions. More people die out there on the reservation of uh, hypothermia. They get out get drunk, and they wander around out there, and they die in the cold. Isn't that sad? And they need the Lord. They need the Lord. And I'm so thankful for uh, when I preached out there in their Bible college, they had like, like 19 students that were preparing themselves to be preachers and start churches on the reservation. I'm tempted uh, in a couple of years maybe to have a, a missions conference and just bring in the Indians. Just pray they don't scalp us. I mean, if they get me, if they get me or Brother Chris Toomey, they ain't going to get much, are they, Brother Chris? I mean, they'll be wanting their money back. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, we love the Navajos, and, and uh, I'm so thankful uh, for, the, for them and the ministry there, and boys and girls and young people and, and all up and down the scale of life being saved out there on the reservation. Amen. And, and that is a blessing, amen, and so we thank the Lord for the Haynes family being there all these years, being faithful to the Lord. One of our first missionaries, Brother Mark and Miss Tricia Haynes, and then now their son Joel. Joel preached there when he was 17 years old, and now he's got five children and raising them out there on the reservation with these Indians that are there. And uh, that's a blessing to have them. All right, well, let's bow our heads and we'll pray and ask the Lord to uh, bless the offering. Let's bow our heads and just let the Lord bless. The test of time, it's been kept throughout the years, passed all through saints of old, through the heartache and the tears. Its precepts are still real, as in days of long ago. It's sweeter than honey, more precious than gold. God's word has fed me when I had a need. It's been my strength when I was weak. Protected, preserved, sweetest words ever heard forever, O oh Lord, thy word. Kept by God, given to man, forever it shall stand, a light into my path, in a dark and dreary land. It's, it's a, a lamp 
leap unto my feet and will leap from day to day. It's everlasting and will never pass away. God's word has fed me when I had a need. It's been my strength when I was weak. Protected, preserved, sweetest words ever heard forever, O oh Lord. Thy word forever, O oh Lord, thy word. Thank you, ladies. Um, we have several cases of Bibles left, and of course last week we had about all over up here. And I think we got about 13 cases left. If you didn't get it to mail a, a, a box of Bibles, uh, I think posted actually going up today by three dollars. So uh, it's about anywhere from 85 something down to whatever. If you get one going to Canada, that's a lot cheaper. But um, I think it's 84 dollars, and then it was going up three dollars, so it'd be about 87 dollars on an average to mail a box of Bibles. And we named off a bunch of different countries last week: that uh, Uganda, Canada, Netherlands, Zambia, Africa, India. Honduras, Paraguay, uh, Guyana, Mexico, um, Greece. So we had bi bi Bibles going everywhere, and that's where these, some of these are from, those countries. So if you didn't get to, to um, mail a box of Bibles and you'd like to do that, would you hold your hand up if you'd like to get a box right now? Okay, Brother Ben, let's, uh, let's come here, boys. Y'all come help your dad. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Hold your hand back up. We'll just bring one to your seat. And if you need help carrying it out, there's several hands there. Yeah, come on, Peyton, come help grab a box or two. If you want one or two or whatever you want, it'd be a blessing, okay? And, and we're sending them now to the distant lands. You're just paying the postage. They're already uh, marking everything, and they'll be going to other parts of the world. Yeah, grab another batch there, and, and Miss Vicky's got her hand up. and Miss, uh, yeah. yeah, Brother Charles is going to do another one over here. Yeah, Brother Bob, come on, Roman, grab another one, yeah. I can grab another one back there. Miss Vicky got her. Hold your hand back up if you didn't get one. You like one? Anybody else? Okay, yeah. Michaela back there too. Take one back to Michaela. Miss Lydia wants one here. Yeah, go ahead and go to the back with another box. Uh, Peyton. On the left back there, Miss Vicky by Jag. All right, Brother Eric wants one. Yeah, going back to Brother Eric uh, Roman. That'd be good. Hey, thank y'all. It's a blessing. I, I you know. I love my Bible. I thank the Lord for the Bible. I'm glad that um, as a little boy, uh, I was given Bibles. You know, the, the Gideons used to give out Bibles in school, and I'm so thankful for my Bible. I mean, I love my Bible. But, you know, to give a new convert, somebody who's accepted Christ as their Savior, uh, it's kind of like going to play baseball and you ain't got no glove. You know, I mean, man, for a child of God to have a Bible is a big, I mean, it's a part of what we, you know, what we are so we can learn the great doctrines of the Bible, the great teachings of the Bible, the great stories of the Bible. Anybody else need one? Raise your hand. All right. You were just moving your hair, weren't you? You didn't want to buy this picture like that. Yeah, be careful. It's kind of like going to auction. Be careful. You know, uh, scratching your ear right now is not a good time to do that. Amen. <laughs> Uh, also have Bible reading schedules uh, in the back, and and uh, I was reading it here in the in the deal we put it in the bulletin. By the way, we have bulletins in the back too. We're going to get cranked back up on, on our bulletins, and and uh, they're on the back table back there. Our, our theme this year is door to door and shore to shore, and we're still uh, getting all the, the, the everything done on that. So, uh, but we got the, the bulletins here. It's our 30th anniversary, the first Sunday in February, so we're going to be celebrating that all year long. I hope you'll mark that date. We'll have big dinner on the ground. And, uh, I know my nephew Aaron's coming in and his family. Brother Burton Gates is coming in and his family. Brother Daniel Keeler and Linda Flam are coming back in. I'm not sure about my son Jake, but some of the other families that attend our church that have moved away, they're trying to come back in. We'll, we'll just have a great day that day. It'll be a lot of fun, and, and we'll have testimonies and people buying cards and so forth. Um, but in this men's Bible reading schedule here, there's two ones, uh, a guy. 
glad to step in here during our week of Bible study. And uh, for the purpose of this guide, it's to help direct your reading of God's Word and try to finish and try to get the math and prep for tonight's study. It is reserved for the visible check and encouragement to those who purpose to read God's Word the entire Bible. And it's a good Bible that we read and followed in six months by reading six chapters a day in Psalms chapter 1 and one year by reading two chapters daily in nine chapters on Psalms. So that's what I would recommend if you've never read your Bible through. You know, read three chapters a day and five on Sunday, okay? And that's a great place to, to start. And uh, upon completion of reading through the Bible, Beams, uh, which is the Bible ministry that provides these Bible reading schedules and also provides these Bibles to the missionaries free of charge, and then we pay the shipping, uh, Bibles uh, will, uh, Beams will award you a beautiful certificate of completion suitable for framing, and then to receive your certificate, send to the Beams ministry there in Gulfport, Mississippi, has the address, and you actually mail this back and you sign here, I've read every chapter of the Bible, you put your name and you date it, and then they send you a certificate of completion in your Bible. And I'm telling you, it's nice, you can frame it and hang it on your wall and, and all of that. I mean, it's a good testimony. I mean, a lot of Christians have never read their Bible through, okay? And we're going to talk about that this morning. And uh, in Amos chapter number 7, uh, and it's kind of a sad sermon this morning, and you have to kind of stay with me, but I, you'll find out why uh, that we would call it uh, sad. And uh, but we're going to kind of look at the parallel here in Amaziah and Amos's day, and uh, the parallel with America today that we live in. Okay, in Amos, um, the book of Amos, Amaziah is the priest of Bethel, and he had the entire religious establishment behind him, and and uh, so that's Amaziah the priest, the priest. And then Amos, the shepherd of Tekoa, he seemed to be kind of standing alone. And, and Amos was, uh, was the one, uh, had one in his corner, amen, who would make all the difference, and that was the Lord, okay? And we stand for the old paths, and we need the, the courage of the country preacher, Amos. He, Amos had backbone, amen, to fight the, the good fight of faith. And, and God help, uh, help us to remain faithful in these last days, okay? Now I want you to we'll pick up on the story. And, Amaziah, the, the, the priest of Bethel, he accused the prophet of God, Amos, the old country preacher, of conspiracy. And I want you to pick up on the story in Amos chapter number 7, and I want you to look in verse number 9. The Bible says in Amos 7, 9, And the high places of Isaac shall be desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam, with the sword. And Amaziah, you know, he, he accused the prophet of God, Amos, of conspiracy. Look at verse number 10. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos hath conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. Verse 11. For thus Amos saith, Jeroboam shall die by the sword. And Israel shall surely be led away captive out of their own land. And so he really accused Amos of, of, uh, of treason and uh, against the king. But Amaziah was a liar. Amaziah was a false prophet. He was a wolf in sheep's clothing. And, and the real, uh, you know, again, the real problem with Amaziah was he did not recognize the authority of behind the old country preacher named Amos. Amos just tell it like, it, he'd just tell them what God told him to tell them, okay? And he referred to the message as, as his words. And it wasn't his words, it was the Lord's words, okay? It was the Lord's words that, that Amos was speaking, okay? And, and again, uh, God was standing by, uh, you know, in, 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 by Amos during this time, okay? And again, uh, the high priest of Bethel was actually opposing not only God, God's man Amos, but, but he was opposing God. And uh, look in verse number 12 there, Amos 7, 12. It says, Also Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go, flee thee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread and prophesy there. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel, and it is the king's court. Wow. So he exercises his right as the priest of Bethel to tell Amos where to preach and what to preach and, and, and how to preach. But Amos had backbone. 
Man, I like preachers that just preach it straight, amen? I mean, I just like preachers that have backbone, and man, Amos was bold, and his preaching was accurate, amen? He was a Bible preacher, okay? Now, watch this. Let me just read a little bit more, and we get to where we're going. Verse number 14, Then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said unto me, Go, prophesy unto my people Israel. Now therefore hear thou the word of the Lord. Thou sayest, Prophesy not against Israel, and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. Look at verse 17. Wow. Therefore thus saith the Lord, and this was the message from Amos to Amaziah. Whoa. He says, Thus saith the Lord, Thy wife, this is the preacher man talking to the false prophet. He says, Thy wife shall be an harlot in the city. That's not real popular preaching, is it? And thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword, and thy land shall be divided by line, and thou shalt die in a polluted land, and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of this land. Wow. Amos was condemning the sins of of the land and the sins of the castle and the sins of the religious uh, establishment. And, and again, uh, wow, did he ever have a message for Amaziah, a personal message for him. So now we come to chapter number 8, okay, and, and uh, we're getting to the message now. And this is the fourth vision that God had given Amos, okay, the fourth vision, okay. The first vision uh, in chapter 7 and, and verses 1 and 2 uh, was the grasshoppers, uh, destroying the crops, and then the second vision was the fire burning down the land in, in verses uh, chapter 7, verses 4 and 5, and then the nation failing the plumb line test in Amos chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, okay? So this is the fourth, uh, the fourth vision, okay? God sends them a fruit basket. Now let's look in Amos chapter number 8 and verse number 1. Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, the end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. Wow, this is really sad, y'all. I mean, it, it, it was over, okay? The last chance was gone. The last invitation verse had been sung. The service was dismissed, and God was not going to pass that way again. And the basket of summer fruit contained the final crop of the year in the fall harvest, and soon the cold winds would blow, and, and the trees would be stripped bare, and the people would settle in for winter. But it would be too late to gather another harvest. It would be too late to repent. The prophet Jeremiah said it like this in Jeremiah 8.20, The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Wow. Look at verse number 3, Amos 8.3. And the songs of the temple shall be howling, howlings in that day, saith the Lord God. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Verse 4, hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn, and, and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small, and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit? So this wicked crowd, you know, that, that, that Amaziah's crowd, by their greed, they had mocked the great command of, of keeping the Sabbath day. Then they turned the Lord's day into a day of profit and a, day, a time of deceit. They used false measures and in the marketplace, and they weighed produce on crooked balances. Verse number 6, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes, yea, and sell the refuse of the wheat. And again, the Lord lifted up his hand to make an oath to them. And their greatest possession the children of Israel had um, was, their, was their land. And their land was a gift from God. Look at verse number 7. The Lord hath sworn by the excellency of Jacob, Surely I will never forget any of their works. 
And so it's like God had blessed them, but they weren't reciprocating and obeying what God had commanded them to do, okay? And uh, God said, I gave you this mighty land as part of my agreement with you, but you've not kept your promise. You've not kept your, up, your end of the bargain up, and I, I'm not going to forget it. Wow. It does matter how we live as God's children, by the way. And look at verse number, verse number 8. Shall not the land tremble? By the way, we don't want to make God mad. We do not want God to judge us. Verse number 8, Shall not the land tremble for this, and every one mourn that dwelleth therein? And it shall rise up holy as a flood, and it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon. And I will darken the earth in the clear day. And I will turn your feast into mourning. And all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins. And baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the mourning, the mourning of an only son. And the end thereof as a bitter day. Wow, it's a judgment of God, y'all, uh, because God's people weren't doing what God's people were supposed to be doing. Losing an only son meant the deepest occasion of sorrow imaginable. So this was a bitter day, a bitter day in a, the life of the children of Israel. And Amos preached that God had delivered the final opportunity. The party went on for more than 30 years. Israel was not conquered until 722 B.C. It was during those years God sent the famine. God sent the famine into the land. Now look at verse number 11. Verse number 11, Amos 8, 11. The Bible says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. Watch this now. Not a famine of bread, nor of thirst for water, but of hearing. The words of the Lord. Wow. Wow. A famine of hearing the words of the, of the Lord. Hey, the people chose to listen to, to Amaziah. And they rejected the old country preacher Amos, the shepherd of Tekoa. They rejected the one man's message who was fearless enough to tell them the truth. Hey, they wanted a popular preacher instead of a Bible preacher. There's a lot of people like that nowadays. They have itching ears and they want teachers. They don't want the Bible. I mean, they don't want, hey, listen, I want the Bible because the Bible is a, is a two-edged sword and, hey, it cuts me on the way in, it cuts me on the way out, and it helps me to get right with God when the Bible's preached. They wanted a popular preacher, not a Bible preacher. They wanted a proper message, not a convicting message. Hey, I wouldn't go to a church where I didn't get my toes stepped on every once in a while. I wouldn't go to a church where they didn't preach on sin and call a spade a spade. Amen. Man, I just like Bible preaching. Thus saith the Lord preaching. They wanted a proper message, not a convicting message. They wanted to prosper, not to repent. They wanted to prosper, not to repent. That's the problem with the ministers in Amaziah's day. They may use smooth words, but their product is a famine of the Bible in the land. Yes, it's true today that a smaller percentage of American people are going to church on a weekly basis, and, but there's still a lot of people going to the house, houses of religion in America. According to a Gallup poll, a Gallup survey, 128 million Americans go to church services on an, on a, uh, on an average week, not Christmas or Easter. Sure, there are millions of Americans who, have, uh, Americans who have plenty of time for golf and hunting and fishing, but, but no time for God. Yet the 128 million people that went to church last Sunday far surpasses the 86 million who will golf or hunt or fish this year. Last Sunday, more people went to, the, went to church than went to the NFL and NBA and Major League Baseball stadiums for an entire year. More people read their Bibles than watch the Super Bowl. For every one person that went to a movie, more than five went to church. For every one McDonald's we have in America, there are 24 churches. 
For every Walmart, there are 80 churches. We definitely have religion in America, but we also have a famine of the Bible. Do you see the parallel between the nation of Israel in those days and our own nation today? 2 Timothy 4.2, the Bible says preach the word. Amen. Preach the word. There's not much Bible preaching going on today. 2 Timothy 4.3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, teachers who tell them what they want to hear, not what they need to hear. They have time for plays and, 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 and programs and concerts and entertainment, but people are not getting the Bible. And as a result, we have a nation of religious people who are ignorant of the Bible. Americans have great respect for the Bible. Even though the Bible is constantly being attacked, 56% of American people believe the Bible is the Word of God and without errors. 88% of American homes own at least one Bible. In homes that have Bibles, there are, uh, is an average of 4.7 of them. So there are well over a half a billion Bibles sitting on the coffee tables and bookshelves uh, in America, in our homes. There are more Bibles than ever, but here's the problem. Of those who own Bibles, only 37% of them read them once a week. Of those who read the Bible, only 57% gave any thought as to how the Bible applies in their life. So for all those who own a Bible and say they believe the Bible, 75% have never read it through. I'm talking about people that have a Bible. 75% of people who have a Bible have never read their Bible through. That's what my challenge was last week. Read the Bible through in 2022. Yeah. Read the Bible through in 2022. And we've got a Bible reading checklist. You can grab one on the way out this morning and you can check it off. Three chapters a day, five on Sunday. Read your Bible through in 2022. Wow. Wow. In other words, 75% have never read it through. 135 million, 738, uh, 783,659 adults in America would point to the Bible and say that book is the perfect Word of God. But of those, 101,837,744 of them haven't cared enough to read it through one time. What a sad parallel between the religion in America today and the followers of Amaziah in Isaiah's day. Hosea 4, 6, the Bible says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Wow. Look at Amos, look at his prophecy. Look at verse number 11. Look at his prophecy again, verse number 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of a thirst for water, but of hearing, but of hearing the words of the Lord. famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Most people think of the judgment of God that it comes from in the form of hurricanes and earthquakes and tornadoes and floods and blizzards and avalanches and tsunamis and all those kind of things. But who would have ever thought that God would judge people by causing them to be ignorant of the word of God? God was telling them, hey, you've rejected my man Amos. You've rejected my word. You've rejected me, God said. You've rejected my vision. You've rejected me. I'll give you up to your own ways. I'll give you the religion that you crave for. But it's going to be a powerless religion in the day of trouble. Wow. They thirsted for a religion without the Bible. And God gave it to them. Whoa. Maybe some laughed at, 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 when Amaziah was verbally putting Amos down. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, that old country preacher, who's he think he is? I'm sure they laughed at, at Noah when he was building the ark 120 years out there. What kind of idiot's building the boat when it's never rained before? And God's man was building that boat. But the day was coming when they would wish they had an Amos to go to. Look at Amos 4.12. The Bible says, and they shall wander from sea to sea, from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro, 
to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. Wow. 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 When the wheels started coming off and the Syrian army was destroying the land and Israel finally decided as a last ditch effort to see if anybody could get a message from God. Amaziah, the priest, he didn't have any answers. Amos was nowhere to be found. But listen to me, heaven was silent. Oh, man. Wow. Say, preacher man, what, what in the world are you doing? When I think about this, this story in the Bible, in Amos, Let me just say this to you. When I think about the Bible and I think about this message, please listen to me. Think about how little time how little time that I as your pastor spend in the Bible. And it convicts me, y'all, because listen, man, I, I want to spend more time. I need more Bible. I don't need less Bible. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We preached about it last Sunday, how that, wow, they built the, Ezra rebuilt the temple and Nehemiah built the wall and, and they called Ezra the scribe and the platform and seven priests on one side and six priests on the other side and they opened the, the book of the law of Moses and they read in it distinctly for six hours. And everybody stood and gave attention out of respect to the Word of God. And they bowed their heads and they lifted up their hands to God. Why? Because they respected God and they reverenced God and they feared God. And I'm thinking, here we are. Here I am. Man, God help me. Spend more time in my Bible this year. He's getting ready to come back, y'all. I'm not kidding you. He's getting ready to come back. Jesus is getting ready to come back. And it's going to be ready or not. Here I come. And, man, I'd love to be immersed in my Bible this year. Just, man, spending more time than I've ever spent in, in my life. And the trumpet sound and the dead in Christ arise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And hear the Lord say, Son, you finally got it. It's about my word. And by the way, when you hold that word, you know who you're holding? The word became flesh and dwelt among. It's like, it's like, you know, when you hug your, your Bible, it's like hugging Jesus. Amen. Hey, thank God for the word of God. Oh, God, help me. I don't want to get so busy that I push the word of God right out of my life. It's like pushing Jesus out. I don't want to do that. And this message ought to convict every one of us. We shouldn't just give lip service. Yeah, I'm going to read my Bible through, you know, in 2022. Hey, listen, those things we do in secret, when you really do read your Bible through in 2022, there's a God in heaven that's watching you. Hey, he, wrote for, he wrote it for our admonition, our learning. He wrote, this is a love letter from heaven. His commandments are not grievous. He's not just trying to keep us from having a good time. He really does love us, and we're his children. And he has commandments, and he wants us to live a righteous life and a holy life. And God, hey, how are we going to know what he wants if we never crack the book open? Hey, you wouldn't be very fat and sassy if you only ate Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. You'd be starving to death, physically speaking. Hey, I can't, look, look at me. I can't give you, y'all. I can't, can't give you. I can't give you enough spiritual food to sustain you. You're going to be bony maroney. You know, man, you've got to get in your own Bible. You've got to get in your own Bible and, and love God's law. Man, I love it when people say, oh, pastor, look here, look here. I'm like, wow, man, that's Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Man, I love to be around people that love the Word of God. How can we love it if we don't ever read it? 
hey, we can bust off in here with the best of them. We can sing, oh, how I love Jesus. We can sing kumbaya. We can sing whatever. But, you know, we can draw nigh with our lips, but our heart could be way far away from him. In Amaziah's day, hey, they didn't want no preaching on sin. They wanted an ear-tickling preacher. I don't want no ear tickling preacher. I want a Bible preacher. You just tell me what God says and let me deal with it on my end. And by the way, if there's a problem, it ain't on his end. The problem's on mine. Oh, oh, how love I thy law. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Man, I just want to, I want to let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Man, I want to, I want to just draw nigh to God and let God draw. I want to crawl up in his lap and I just want to be close to him in what little time I have left. And what do you mean what little time? Our life is a vapor. It appears for a little time and then vanisheth away. You can do whatever you want to do. As Joshua said in Joshua 24, 15, it's for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. I don't care what everybody else is doing. I don't care that all these other people never open their Bibles or don't even know what it says or what it's talking about. Not me, man. I'm going to get in there and I'm going to study to show myself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let's bow our heads this morning. I don't know where you're at. I don't know where you're at on this sermon. But I know as a child of God, I know I, I need to spend more time in His Word. How many of you with me on that one say, Preacher, I know I need to spend more time in His Word. Oh, I love His Word when I get into it and get up and study it. I love it, I love it, I love it. But I'm kind of just, man, I've gotten off track a little bit in my Bible study, in my Bible time with God. Preacher, just, man, I want to pray for you this morning. I just love, I love you and I want what's best for you. I want to hear God say, well done, now good and faithful servant. All these other people that didn't give his word the time of day, I don't want you to be in that category. I want you to be one of those that, that loved his law with all your heart and spent time in his word. Maybe you're here this morning and say, preacher, I, I've never been saved. I, I'm not a child of God. Hey, if you're here this morning and you're lost and you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, hey, he died for you. Jesus Christ died for you. He died and paid the penalty on your sin so you would not have to die and go to hell and pay for your sin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that's anybody, believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Hey, the Bible way to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 3, 18 goes on to say, He that believeth not is condemned already. If you don't do anything, you're going to die and go to hell. We don't want you to go to hell. You came to the right place. Man, we love you. God loves you. Jesus died to pay the penalty on your sin. The Bible says, But God commended his love toward us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So Jesus died for you to pay the penalty on your sin so you would not have to die and go to hell and pay for it yourself. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Sin has to be paid for. But then it goes on to say, but the gift of God, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hey, you have to receive that gift. You have to appropriate what Jesus did for you when he died on the cross by, by asking him to forgive you of your sins, turning from your sins, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, receiving him. As your personal Savior. Man, what a blessing. And I did that when I was 15 years old, a lost preacher kid. The best way I knew how I turned uh, from my sins to the Lord, and I, I bowed my head and I prayed and asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins, come into my heart and be my Savior. Man, I'll tell you, I'm so thankful today that I'm saved. I prayed something like this, like this by the way. I was lost, and I prayed something like this. You, if you realize you're lost this morning, you could pray just a simple sinner's prayer. But I prayed something like this Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I have done wrong. I don't want to die and go to hell. I want you to forgive me of all my sins. I invite you into my heart.
to be my Savior. I'm trusting in you and you alone to take me to heaven when I die. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Just a simple sinner's prayer. And man, I'm telling you, I don't know a lot of things about a lot of things, but I know that when I die, when life on this earth is over, that I'm going to heaven because I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. If you're here this morning and, 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 and you've never done that, listen, wow, today is the day of salvation. How many of you just slip your hand up and say, Preacher, I'm so thankful I am saved. I have done that before. I have trusted Christ as my Savior. Would you slip your hand up as a testimony? God bless you. It's just as a testimony. If you're here this morning and say, Preacher, I can't raise my hand. I'm not sure if I die today that, I, that I'd go to heaven, but I sure don't want to die and go to hell. Preacher, would you pray for me? Is there anybody here like that? We wouldn't embarrass you or anything, not going to call you out, but just say, Preacher, would you pray for me? I'm not sure about that. I, I've been thinking about it a lot, but I sure don't want to die and go to hell. Preacher, would you pray for me? I'm lost. I've never been saved, the Bible. Would you slip your hand up and let me just pray for you? God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? You flip your hand up and say, Preacher, I'm just not sure if I die today that heaven would be my home. I sure don't want to die and go to hell, Preacher. Would you pray for me? Anyone like that? All right, let's pray. Father, we love you today. We sure do. And Lord, I'm glad that you're not willing that any should perish. You don't want anybody to die and go to hell. Lord, you want everybody to come. But Lord, not everybody's going to do it, Lord, because uh, they've got to believe. They've got to receive you themselves. Lord, I can't do it for them, but you paid it all but so they can have a home in heaven. But, Lord, uh, it's an act of a man's will that saves his soul. That man's got to come to Christ, and he's got to do it personally, Lord. And, God, uh, I pray today for that one that raised his hand. I pray for others, Lord, that are just maybe not sure of their salvation today. Lord, God, I, I pray that you'd save those. Lord, I'm glad the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then, Lord, you said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, I'm so thankful for that day when I called upon the name of the Lord and I ask you to forgive me of my sin and to come into my heart and be my Savior. The day of my salvation, Bible salvation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bless now this invitation. And, Lord, help us all to immerse ourselves in the Word of God this year. Lord, please, you've seen the hands, you know the hearts. And I know there are those here that have special needs. I know there are others, Lord, that are listening, that are sick, Lord, at home. And, God, they need a little touch from Thee. I pray you'd bless and meet needs now. Oh, God, help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together. We'll let Miss Deanna play softly. If you'd like to come to the altar this morning and, and bow your knee and heart before the Lord. Man, I don't know about you, but, man, I need a revival of the Bible in my life. I need a revival of the Bible. Man, I love God's Word. I love God's Word. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you who took Beam's Bible, the boxes, to mail them this week. Can you imagine being in some other part of the world and not have ever had a copy of the Word of God? You couldn't go down to the bookstore and buy one. And, and, and you know, even if you had the money, the people, they don't have access to the Word of God. And they don't have the money to buy the Word of God. And yet we've got the Bible in their language, in their language. And is, is that not amazing? In their native tongue. Or they can open the Word of God and, you know, like we, you know, we can open and read it in English. They can open it and read it in their language. I'm so excited, man. I'm so excited. Right now, Beams is raising $40,000 for 5,000 new Croatian Bibles. My dad led the missionaries, dad, who translated the Bible into the Croatian language. My dad led his daddy to the Lord. My dad's in heaven. Wow. The Croatian Bible, 5,000 of them, going to all, all those Croatians who've never had a copy in their own language. Man, I'm glad Johnny Leslie took 19 years of his life, 19 years of his life to translate the equivalent from English to the Croatian language. It's a lot of work, man. There's a lot of words in the Bible. I can't imagine doing translation work. That fries my brain just thinking about that. I wouldn't even know the difference between Croatian or some other languages probably if people were up here quoting, you know, I wouldn't know how, you know. Not long ago we had a missionary to Germany, Brother Shipman. I had Brother Shipman come up here and he grew up in the, in the, on the mission field and he translated for me in the German language. Man, that was different. You know, that was good. I'm proud of that boy. He graduated from high school in Germany. I thought, man, a lot of this is awesome. Now he's over here reaching Germans, amen. That's a big thing if you can speak their language. Nobody can reach a German like a German can. 
Amen. Nobody can reach a Mexican like a Mexican. Nobody can reach. I'm just telling you, man, there's something about that. You reach those nationals and then let them go reach their people. That's powerful. That's what missionaries do. I don't speak Navajo. They got them songbooks. Got them songbooks in English and they got them in Navajo for the, for the older people who can't speak English. And they'll sing Amazing Grace in English and they'll sing Amazing Grace in Navajo. Oh, yeah, you start getting goosebumps when you hear that stuff. But thank God for people. Man, I, you, hey, the, the enemy couldn't, couldn't crack them Navajo code talkers. We thank the Lord for that. Amen. Come on, Brother Bob. That Navajo, all them languages are, you know, they're like, they're, they're like Greek to me. I don't, I, don't know, I don't speak none of them. I don't even speak good English. But I do thank the Lord for people that, that have sense enough to. In Bowie, Texas, I went on a field trip one time. They got a linguistic school there. That's where they teach you how to learn a language where they don't have a language. Teach you how to form an alphabet where they don't have an alphabet. Man, that's like way over my, I'm like Amos the country preacher, amen. I don't know about all that stuff, amen. That's people a lot smarter than me. But man, I appreciate people that work real hard and do all that translation work and go places where nobody's ever been before and tell them about Jesus. Powerful, isn't it? Hey, I might not be able to do it, but I can... I can have a little part through our missions program. Amen. I can give a little, give a little change, amen, and, and see people get saved in other parts of the world. Well, thank you all for being here. I love you all. And uh, this is the week that we go every year to the National Church Planning Conference in Oklahoma City. And we're going to be taking some money there to give away to churches being planned. They'll probably be about, I think last time, maybe before COVID or whatever, they had like 90, 90 church planners. I mean, it's a lot of church planners. It's a big meeting. But we just sit there, and, and, and the guys get up three at a time, and they'll give a little couple-minute testimony about what their needs are. And then pastors and churches come, and, uh, and they help meet those needs. So we're going to take some money from our missions fund because our folks have been faithful to give. We're going to take some and help, help a bunch more churches get started yeah. in America. Yeah. Are you all understanding? we got missionaries around the world, but America, we're living on the mission field. When you walk out the door, you're entering the mission field. Man, South Arkansas needs Jesus. Are y'all with me on that? Well, hey, 30 years ago, the first Sunday in February, we're getting ready to celebrate our 30th, 30th anniversary. So I moved here with my little family 30 years ago. Started in our home with 14 people. Hey, there are young men like that now that are just like I was when I come out of the gate 30 years ago. And they got their little families and their little kids and they're going around all over America starting churches. And we're taking some money to give. We're not just saying, hey, be you warm and filled. We're not saying, we're, we're going to pray for you. We're going to put, put our money where our mouth is and give them some money to help them. And, and pastors all over that building will start standing. They raised, that, last time I was there, they raised over $600,000 for church planters. That'll wow you. That'll knock your socks off. I'm just glad we can have a little part in it. Yeah. I love it, Brother Larry. That's a great meeting. That's a great, good preaching and all that. But, man, I just love to see all those needs being met. Charles Hamilton, he played professional baseball. He pastored in Greenville, Mississippi. He's about six foot six, baseball player. And they raised thirteen thousand something dollars to buy him a van. They got all that money raised, and then somebody raised their hand and said, I'll give him a van. I was like, What in the world? Why didn't you say that thirteen thousand dollars ago? So they just gave him he came out smelling like a rose. He got a van plus thirteen thousand dollars. He was so happy. I was happy for him, amen. But anyway, it's an exciting meeting. And, of course, my grandson, Dylan, is going to Heartland Baptist Bible College. And we'll get to see Dylan and Belle and their new little house they got and all that stuff. And so we're excited about that, amen. Brother Burton Gates is going to be there. My son Jake's coming in from Louisiana. Burton's coming in from Philly. Burton's getting ready to start that second church the, the last Sunday in December. Please pray for him. Burton's coming in for anniversary Sunday. I can't wait to see him and all the different ones coming in. Be sure and mark that down, okay? And uh, the, the first Sunday, February, February 6th, we begin now to pray about it and invite some people to come that day. We'll have a big dinner on the ground. It's going to be a lot of fun. And so I'm excited about it, okay? But I love you all. Thank you all for being here this morning, okay? Pray for the families in our church that are sick, please. Amen. Remember, we'll have youth choir practice tonight at 5, and the children's choir at 530 is service tonight at 6. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you this morning for your word, Lord. I pray that even though our country may be in a midst of a famine, Lord, I thank you that we still have your word. I thank you that we still have a country preacher that is preaching what you lay on his heart, Lord. And I thank you for our preacher this morning and for our church and for your word and for your goodness to us. And Lord, I pray you just help us not to take those things for granted and lose them. 
like your children did in the Old Testament. Lord, we thank you for visitors here today. Pray you give them a special blessing. Just dismiss us in your love now and bring us back safely tonight. Lord, thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray.